Well, of course, most of us have really come to rely on social media as part of our daily lives, something we maybe glance at or scroll through throughout the day or use it to share thoughts or pictures with friends and family. But now that a sitting president has been barred from using one of popular social media platform, Twitter, Many people are wondering what that means for free speech. Fox so Simon Gutierrez had an in-depth conversation with a social media researcher about that very question. Dr. Aaron Spotswood at Portland State University studies how people interact with social media and with each other on social media. She says there's a common misconception that people have a right to use these platforms. If you could uh, give me some kind of an idea uh, what we're looking at here in terms of uh, some of these social media platforms, what rights people actually have to use them? Well, they have the rights that they agree to when they sign up for these services. So when they use these platforms in ways that violate uh, the terms of service that they agree to, the platform has every right to ban said user from using their platform and to um, communicate with other users via that platform. Where exactly does freedom of speech enter here? Uh, these aren't public utilities, but in some ways people are treating them as if they are. And I think that's inappropriate. Uh, these companies have the right to decide what it is. It's In fact, it's the First Amendment that gives them the uh, private companies the right to moderate their platforms as they see fit. Should there be a discussion about potentially uh, regulating these companies somehow in such a way that they are viewed more as a utility than they are private companies. I think recent events potentially open up for those sorts of conversations where regulation and where oversight uh, occurs because these companies have amassed an, an immense amount of power, right? I think this is something that we need to take more seriously as a country. How viable is something like a Twitter post or a Facebook post in uh, uh, say, if you're pursuing criminal charges for inciting a riot or something like that, is, is that evidence that can be used in that direction? Almost oh, definitely it can be. I think it's a good use of the platform to use it as a way to hold people accountable for their actions um, and their words. No one has the right to uh, propagate violence towards another person. These platforms hold an, an immense amount of power for people to not just communicate and share information with each other, but to organize. Um, and to uh, latch on to what someone else posts and use that as like their new beacon of truth, as their new call to action. Um, and that can be incredibly dangerous. Dr. Spotswood says the other thing to consider, the other side of this, is how valuable some of these platforms are in bringing people together and establishing a sense of community. She says that's been especially important during this pandemic. I'm Simon Gutierrez, Fox 12, Oregon.